Hello again everyone, this is Steve, uh, coming to you with a new puzzle. This one's actually one I created, uh, and mostly that's because, you know, I come from the country, and in the country we have this rather, uh, unfortunate, if you want to call it that, or rather troublesome issue that the power likes to go out anytime we have severe weather. Uh, you know, that's just part of living in the country. You live in the country, you have to deal with power outages. Uh, one of the things, though, that really sucks about power outages is you have no running water. So uh, that was one of the things that kind of spawned this little ch uh, mental challenge for myself, was figuring out how to come up with an emergency water system for a house, which this can also be translated to a regular water system for a cabin, uh, for really, you know, any place you need to have running water, but, you know, the normal process of running water doesn't apply. So, but that that's basically what this is. It's a, it you know, can either be an emergency water system or it could be like an off-grid water system. Something that runs off of solar, runs off of just a regular battery, anything that you want to power it with. I don't recommend powering this with a uh, generator unless you have the generator doing other things and, and you know, in the in-between periods when the water is actually flowing. Because otherwise you're just wasting gas. So, I mean, if you're running the generator for other things, that's fine. Uh, this is also good, like, if you lose power and your generator isn't big enough to uh, run the water pump, you can just click the system on and off you go. So, but anyways, uh, the basics of this challenge is to provide an emergency water system or main water system, again, depending if you want to use it in the cabin. Uh, you know, but this would be, in my situation, it would be an emergency water system because I don't have a cabin. <laughs> but anyways, uh, it must provide 40 PSI at 2.5 gallons per minute, basically normal house flow. Uh, must be able to be refilled easily, and you'll see why in a second. Uh, it must be able to connect to the home water system and provide running water through a grid down or pump down scenario. Or, if it, again, if you're using the cabin application, that you just need running water, period. So anyways, uh, this is a normal, well, representation of a normal house. And yes, I used uh, clip art to do this because my, otherwise my artwork sucks. <laughs> still kind of sucks, but still, it's a lot better than it was last time. Anyhow, uh, in a normal house, you're typically going to have a well, a well pump, and then the feed that goes into the house that provides you with your running water you know as the water pressure goes down this kicks in charges your accumulator tank in here and you always have pressurized water ready to fly at any given time in a grid down situation or off grid or whatever like that you don't have that now the system here that we're that I'm building starts with a water tank depending on your needs depending on your storage space uh, you can do a 55 gallon water tank, you can do a 240 gallon tote, you can do multiple 55s, it, it's your choice. Uh, if you do multiple units, it's up to you to figure out how you want to connect those together because I'm pretty sure everybody's will be a little differently. As long as you end up with one final main feed into the pump system, you're good. And that that's kind of what this is going to represent. This is basically your re water reservoir, however that ends up taking shape. This is the rest of the system, and no, I'm not. I'm not like cheaping out on this on this demonstration. This is just a rough uh, demonstration because I had to include this down here, which is the battery. Because when you're when the, you know when you're off grid or when you're grid down, it's pretty much assumed you don't have power, or if you do have power, it's probably nothing terribly spectacular. Or if you're in a cabin, you might have solar power, which means you're still running off a 12 volt system or a 12 volt battery. So basically what it is, uh, this block here, which I'm going to demonstrate the, the full details of in a second, this right here is your pumping block. This connects to the house, this connects to your water supply. When the power goes down, it pulls out of here through the pumping system and out into the house. When the grid's up and you want to recharge this, everything kind of flows the other direction, and I'll show that to you in a second. Uh, the battery down here, though, um, one of the things you'll want to work, look into having for that because you never know when the power is going to go down. And a lot of times, if you set these systems up, you're going to forget about them, which is actually good. Because, I mean, if the system works the way it's supposed to work, it's a build it, set it, forget it thing. The problem is 
battery strain over time. So unless it's connected to an a actively charging solar system, uh, you're going to want to have some kind of uh, charge controller over here plugged into the pow home power to keep this thing topped off. And you don't want to go cheap. Do not go cheap. You will cause a house fire. Trust me, you will call, you know, you will burn your house down if you go cheap. Uh, go with something that's that you know connects to the house house power, converts to 12 volt and charges this. That's really good quality. And this could be like four. If you don't think you're going to use it for long periods, 40 amp hours should be enough. If you figure you're going to use it for longer periods, 80, 120, 200 amp hours, whatever you think you're going to end up needing. Uh, that's what you're going to size that emergency battery. And I'm pretty sure power goes out a couple times. You're going to figure out real fast how big your battery needs to be. But but anyways, yeah, you're going to have this connected to the house power and constantly charging so that when the power goes off, you've got power, DC power to run the, the pump. Now let me show you the pump system here. This right here is the basic wiring diagram. Again, I'm not an electrician, so I'm, you know, my drawings suck. Anyways, basically you're going to have one line to the battery and another over here to the battery but it goes through a switch and the reason for the switch is if you're not using this you don't want this thing on uh, because your well pump should do all of the work this is just here in case you know oh poo everything's dead I need running water you know or SHTF whichever way you want to look at it uh, so yeah this stays turned off until you need it and when the power comes back on, you, well, when the power goes out, you turn it on. When the power comes back on, you turn it off. If you want to, you could also set this up wired into your house power so that as soon as the power goes off, that automatically turns on. I've seen switches like that. They're not cheap, but they are very, very useful. And they would basically, if we go back, whoops, if we go back here, they would be, you know, like you'd have your connection over here to go down to your charger over here and it keeps your house charged up and everything, or keep house battery charged up. But then you also, you know, it also connects into here so that as soon as the power goes out, tip, on goes the pump and you have running water, no interruption whatsoever. Uh, although what I would suggest is even if you do put one of those in there, have a regular manual cutoff for the idea that let's just say power goes out in the middle of winter and your pipes freeze and they burst you don't want this thing just sitting there going until that tank's empty because you're gonna have a basement full of water so you want you know you want either a manual on and off which is what i would recommend or if you want it to be automatic put the automatic switch in there but also have a manual cutoff so anyways going on to just the pumping system what you're going to do is you're going to have on the uh you know outflow side of the pump you're going to have a connection from the pump to your house uh, one of the ways I envisioned it comes from my old house where we had a uh, a branch off of the main water system that went down to a regular like water spigot like you'd connect a garden hose to and with and the uh, the washer connected to that if you took that and split it use you know using a splitter you could connect one side to the washing machine, the other side to this emergency pump system. And that way, you know, you're not having to go drop another spigot just to, just to run or have this system here. You just take the existing one, split it out. And what happens is, if, uh, if, there's, no pow if there's no power and this thing's running, it, you know, it pumps up through that connection into the house, and you got running water, which draws out of your tank. To refill that, though, you're going to need a branch off of here. And what this is, is when the power's on, there's back pressure against this pump. And of course, you know, you got that back pressure, even if the switch is on, this thing's not going to turn on. Unless, of course, you know, your, power, your per house pressure goes way down. And yeah, your thing should be off anyways at that point. Uh, but anyways, you know, when the power's on and the well pump's working, you're going to want to have a T, you want to T this off and come down here to a ball valve, or you could have a, uh, a screw valve. Screw valve is the kind that you're going to have on a typical uh, outdoor faucet. Uh, ball valve is the kind that you see like on gas lines and stuff, and it's on off, and there's like very little middle ground on them. Uh, but either one works. I've heard people say that the uh, ball valves, if they're not used regularly, tend to freeze up, and that's a bad thing. But I don't know. I've never had a ball valve freeze up on me. So your mileage may vary. You may not actually ever see it fail. Uh, or freeze up or anything like that so 
if you think it's going to, you know, get a get a twist valve, get a normal, you know, faucet valve and put that in there and, and you're all set to go. And what that's going to do is that's going to uh, prevent the house water from coming back into your system and you'll see here in a second why that is. It's because you have this going to here which refills your tank. So if you're not needing to refill your tank that should be closed. So and the other thing too is if this does turn on and you're you know you're drawing off of this after a certain bit that thing's just going to sit there and just run in a circle it's not going to pressurize your house system it's just going to sit there and run in a circle might th pull a little back in pull a little out back and forth back and forth so that needs to be there to isolate this line so that this does its job when it needs to and it doesn't backflow into here and flood your basement when it doesn't need to so now if you remember one of the criteria for the uh for this little thought experiment one of those was it has to be easily refillable now if you live in the country and you don't have a hand wet or hand pump on a hand well you're doing it wrong because you're going to eventually need that and believe me there was a lot of times growing up we didn't have one and it was a lot of times growing up we so wished we had one uh my grandma had one but that was broke when i was a kid so we never got to use that one but yeah my grandma had one on her uh her well underneath the the windmill and uh my dad said that one that was used a lot so not you know even after they had the regular well in the house they were still using it periodically when the power went out up until the, that hand pump broke but yeah like i say you should have you know either on your existing well if you've got the space in the pipe or in a separate shallow well somewhere that you can get good quality water and hand pump it uh, you should have that because then that will allow you to do one of two things you can either uh, pump it into a bucket and bring it in into the house and fill the system or you could like run a hose from there into here and fill the system that way and I'll explain that in a second here this right here is a system that allows you to refill it in a grid down situation because if the grid is down that ain't gonna do you one lick of good because there's just there's no well pump there's no house natural house pressure the house pressure you get is from this thing and this sure ain't gonna get you what get you any way to fill this up unless and that's what this is right here you have a little dip tube now you're probably wondering what this is because this was a ball valve or twist valve but it's like a one-way valve it's either on or off everything kind of flows in that one direction this is what's called an either or valve an either or valve basically is an l-shaped valve that when it's turned one way water only flows through here if it's turned the other way it only flows through here and you know they're hard to find but you can find them and they are handy as all get out um like i say if you if you're in a grid down situation you can have you know like this could be regular pvc pipe going into here this down here can be like plex pipe or, or something flexible and all you do is like if you don't you know you could you could use this to connect via a hose to your hand pump and you ch -ch 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 pump, pump it directly up into here and of course you can have you would have your pump running and doing its thing and pumping it you know taking it from what you're pumping in and push it in here like this or you could have for example uh this setup if you you know like for this one you're assu it's assuming that you have a bucket you know like you pumped the bucket or went out to the hand well pumped the bucket full brought it in drop the tu dip tube in turn turn the pump on you know and howdy doody off we go and of course that's got to be open when you do it but uh you know like like you know like i say you could take this right here open this up with the with this down in the bucket turn that on pump it will do its job and run the water into the tank and then you turn that off pump shuts off because it pressurizes the system and then off you go you know go get into the bucket bring it in rinse repeat until that's full this was the alternate version which i just showed you for a split second the idea here is uh you take and you open this valve you close this one but you open this one and you open this one 
stick it down in the bucket, turn the pump on, and into your tank, you fill your tank up. Uh, either one works. Uh, I like the either or valve. However, I can see for some people that might be a problem. Uh, now, you know, it, it might be a problem. It might be a situation, too, where, say, something happens to your tank. Tank goes, you know, take, goes and takes a dirt nap. Okay, shut that, open that, leave that shut and just run out of your five gallon bucket. Uh, and if you're just running a normal like cabin and you're just and you're just running out of five gallon uh, not buckets, but uh, like the jerry cans basically. And you're just you're running uh, you bring a nose up from a pump or a well or whatever and you just you stick them you know stick them under the sink, put that in there. That doesn't need to be turned you know, that doesn't even need to be there in that case. You just have that tube going up into here, into here, and then into your house. So, you know, ultra simplified version of this. But this is more, like I say, this is more uh, complex, designed for a permanent installation or something that's, an you know, you're at in an actual house which has a basement and you're needing to have an emergency water system or water pumping system to... Uh, provide pressurized water to the house in a grid down situation. But anyways, that's the puzzle. That's basically the design I came up with. Uh, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this, what you think of it, how you uh, might have changed it if you thought it needed to be changed, uh, something you might do differently. Uh, just you know, just let me know in, in the comments. I'd be definitely interested to hear. Thanks.